Okay, Gabrielle over there noticed his VIN number is in the floor pan. Uh, this is on all Volkswagen Type 1 base platforms. You'll find it underneath the back seat right in front of the inspection plate for your rear shift coupler. Well, we're going to go ahead and read off that number. We're going to figure out what the Beatles' birth date is. In order to do that, simply hit up my website on duckshit.net. And when you... What the hell kind of motorcycle was that? Well, I wish I had that on video. <laughs> that was something a little weird. It looked like my mini chopper. That was really weird. Anyway, hit up my website, duckshit.net. You go to the Get the Beetle Birthday link. It'll take you right to where you need to go. And in the box here for getting your Beetle's birthday, you would then type in your VIN number. And I think it started with a, what, a 134? 134. Yep. 251. 251. 92. 92. Zero uno. Z zero shit. Zero one. No, no zero shit. Zero there we go. We're going to submit that, and we're going to find out this Beetle's birthday. And this is a stupid Beetle, so it might give you some weird results, as as they didn't document the uh, VIN numbers very well way back then for Super Beetles only. Standard Beetles are a different story. But that is obviously a 1974 Super Beetle, a 1303, and it was built or born on Thursday, July 4th, 1974. So that's right, it's a 4th of July baby, or somewhere close to that. Now, how does that affect what you're going to do with the Beetle? Well, it's going to be everything Independence Day. You know, the aliens versus our army and everything. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Day, a little Bill they, Pullman and uh, Will Smith. Uh, Will Smith, and, yeah. Right. The one they teach in school. The Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, no, the real <laughs> shit. The aliens. And the, so Jeez, what be, would we have done without Jeff Goldblum, man? It would have been the end of the world. No, we're probably going to stick to the red, white, and blue team, probably. I don't know. That's kind of a cool idea. to follow my channel then to oh. see where it goes. And where do we find your channel? We're going to go. There's going to be a link below, but Vocho Wagons on YouTube. You'll see me right there. That's it. Vocho Wagons. 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 <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> and we're back today doing another floor pan, this time on a Super Beetle. First time I've ever done one on a Super Beetle. Not that it's any different, except for that front suspension, which you can see is just kind of collapsed because there's no body to hold it together. But in this case, it's gonna be no different because the floor pans are exactly the same procedure. The only difference is, unlike the other videos where I flip the pan over, I'm not gonna be able to do the same on this one because there's no jig on the front end to be able to hold the thing solid. So if I flipped it up, it's gonna just fall over. So we're not gonna do that today. Anyways, you can tell from the loud ass party that's behind me that uh, I'm not the noisiest one in the neighborhood. So for those of you that wanna leave comments that I'm an obnoxious neighbor because I run my tools, guess what? Yeah, you can go f yourselves. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get started on this project. So as always, licky likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly, that way you get updates every time I upload a video. And don't forget to check out duckshit.net for all of my different social media links. B might be making it to this video, we'll see. She's got some personal things going on. And if we get lucky, we might even see Gabrielle, the owner of this floor pan, who I'm doing the work for. If you watch the introduction video to this project over the weekend, you know exactly who he is over at Vocho Wagon. So please throw him a subscription too. Links are down below in the video description, and you can also find him under the first pinned comment. Anyways, thanks so much. We'll be back right after the intro. So anyway, yeah, the music and the kids screaming behind me is uh, really, really loud today. So I'm probably going to be running some background music to drown it out. But here's our floor pans. This is what we're looking at. It looks like we got quite a bit of rust in the rear sections of it. Not so much under the battery. It's kind of in front of the battery, which is kind of interesting. And on the driver's side here, it's got a kind of a tear all the way along the uh, the swedge line in the, uh, the floor pan. So Gabrielle, the owner of this pan, he decided he just doesn't want to dick around with them at all. He just wants to put in some nice solid floor pans. So that's exactly what we've got for that and that's exactly what we're going to start doing. I just fixed my plasma cutter. The plasma cutter, as you remember from last year, during the summer, I set it on fire by accident. Everybody was always bitching that my pine needles were going to catch fire in my yard, and no, it wasn't the pine needles that caught fire, it was the damn plasma cutter did. The plastic jacket on the wire actually burned, and I uh, made quite a mess out of it. But anyway, I got that fixed today. So we're going to try to plasma cut up as much of this as we can. We might use a sawzall on some of it, but uh, what we're going to do before we do anything, this flange that you see with all the bolt holes along the edge here is actually still solid, still good, and still straight. So what I need to do is lay the floor pan over this and align those bolt holes. This one I'm actually allowed that luxury. 
on a lot of the other floor pans that I've done in the past, everything was all busted and broken, bent, just totally knocked out of proportion. And because of that, I could not estimate where these bolt holes were. Some people say, well, go ahead and lay a heater channel on it. Well, if the heater channel is attached to the car, how do you do that? That's not really an option. <laughs> In this case, we're going to cut those humps out of there, we're going to lay the floor pans in, line up the bolt holes, make sure everything's in place, make some marks, cut the rest of it out, weld it in, then we're done. We don't have to paint this pan, we don't have to seal this pan. Gabriel is going to be doing all the rest of the final completion work on this himself over on his YouTube channel. Anyways, let's get into it. <coughs> the first thing I can see down here is this brake line is uh, busted to pieces. So we're just going to pull this and get this out of the way. I'll leave a fired up plasma cutter over here. There's probably brake fluid in it, which is slightly flammable, but we cut on there. There it is. Brake line is now officially out of the way. Alright. Like I destroyed the torch end and replace that. like an idiot. This looks like it's uh, still good. Gabrielle could um, actually salvage that or maybe even sell it to somebody that might need one. Well, those bolt holes are right on the money. This is why I never worry about the spacing on these things. I never have before, because look, bolt hole, bolt hole, bolt hole, bolt hole. Come on, they're all in line. Look at that. Hey, in line, and it's directly butted into that corner. And over here, I don't have to worry too much about that because it's already spaced out the way it is shaped. So yeah, nothing fancy here. Nothing weird has to go on, and it looks like I don't even have to do any trimming to the pan. We're just gonna weld this sucker right in like you see it. Ordinarily when I do these, I like to stand that floor pan up just like I said in the introduction of the video. Oh, but because it's a floppy Super Beetle suspension, those wheels are gonna do whatever the hell they want. In this case, we're just going to lay it flat. I may run the saws all through some of this because it might actually just be a little faster than the plasma cutter. It'll cut that nice straight edge along the lip here, which is very important to get this thing out. It'll also cut through uh, all the layers of weird pipes and tubes and brake lines and crap that's in the way. No, I don't know. We're probably going to use both. So just stay tuned. Watch me. run around this with the plasma cutters a few places that I couldn't get into very easily like behind the uh, seat track so I went ahead and just ran the saws all down through there um, I think it's about ready to come out I right, will lose half of it <laughs> Looks like it's gonna need a little more work over here on this end right here on the little hook up oh, never mind there it is it's off all right one floor pan is out Push it the way. <laughs> now there's the remainder of that metal that's on here along this lip. 
This is where the air hammer comes into play. This is where I make noise that pisses off the neighbors, right? <laughs> we don't have a homeowners association over here, guys. This is Pensacola. As I explained earlier in the video, everybody in this neighborhood makes more noise than I do, and that's on an ordinary day. Me, I get out here with the hammer, air hammer. I think it's, uh, this is probably the second time in two years. The last time I ran it was the last time you saw a video of me replacing floor pans. So anyway. Let's go ahead and uh, clean this thing up, get it chipped up. I'm trying to leave the other side for Gabriel, should he uh, show up. <laughs> so that way he's got one to work on. Hmm. Not bad. Figured now is as good a time as any to go ahead and stick this floor pan in here. And while you guys saw me cutting out the other one, you probably noticed while watching me that I wasn't wearing any gloves and I'm still not wearing any gloves. Because when I handle metal, I usually know what I'm doing and I'm okay with it. You may have also noticed I wasn't wearing a welding mask and that's because the spark is on the other side of the metal. <laughs> it's on the reverse side where I'm not going to be and I can't catch a reflection from it because the angles don't jive. So that's the only reason why I wouldn't wear those things. Uh, ordinarily I would, but in this case we're not worried about it. This fitment looks pretty good on this floor pan. I'd say that looks pretty good. Let me take some photos for my Patreon people. And that's right, you guys can join Patreon also. Hit up patreon.com forward slash duck shit. And you'll see my private stuff and the stuff that I don't share with the general public. Uh, I'm more frequently updating up there as of recently, and this is one such thing. The Patreon members are getting to see well in advance of this video coming out. If you'd like to support me on this channel and my endeavors, please hit me up there. And it's not forced, by the way. Somebody accused me of forcing people to do that. I don't know how I could possibly force somebody to go to Patreon and support me. <laughs> but I ask that you do. Patreon.com forward slash duck shit. Thanks, you guys. Really appreciate it. This tool still seems to be the best one for the job. Make sure you've got a nice sharpened bit on the end of it. Wear your anti-vibration gloves, hearing protection, eye protection, all that good stuff. Here we go. Let's drive the neighbors nuts. floor pan scrap is out along here. There's a couple little spots that I can touch up. I'm going to hit it with a grinder anyway, or a wire wheel, or probably both, so I can clean up whatever rust is on there, because when we want the welds uh, to attach here, you want them to penetrate properly and not sit on top of uh, rusty metal. All the rust, a little bit along the edge here, is just going to go away. Anyway, this side is looking good. I'm going to sweep up the ground here real quickly and just get some of the scrap out of the way, because if you get poked in your hand when you press down on the ground, or in the knee, if you're not wearing knee pads like I am, you'll uh, certainly cry the blues when those little sharp pieces of metal get you. And you can see a whole bunch of the scrap right up underneath there. There's a little more over here. In the last floor pan video, I demonstrated sweeping with a broom that had almost half of its bristles missing, and frankly, I don't care. But to those that were watching, they wanted to focus on that instead of the whole project. So this time, again, I'm using another broken broom on purpose. The other one, actually, I just finally got rid of it, but uh, <laughs> let's see how this one holds up. Here it is. The end fell off of it already. 
There you go. Make fun of me, you fuckers. One more final test fit. That fits good, very, very well. In fact, it fits better than any of the floor pans I've ever used in the past. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now along the edge where it's painted, I'm gonna scratch that off so that way we have a surface to weld to. Some people in the past have told me to punch holes in it. And I have about every inch and a half set up holes, punched them through using a hole punch tool, real simple, and then welded them through plug welding. Other times I would just weld it right along the edge directly to the tunnel. Uh, the tunnel method is certainly a lot easier. The plug method tends to be a little harder because sometimes when you go to weld into the plug before you can penetrate to the metal behind it, you've already burned the floor pan away or so much of it. It just, uh, <laughs> it's made from such thin, cheap metal that's pretty unfortunate but that's just the way it goes so I don't usually plug weld so what we're gonna do is just run along the edge just as I have on every other floor pan that I've done in recent that's worked out real nicely I've been crabbed at before. People are telling me that MIG weld is not the right way to do this. And you're probably right. If I had a proper spot welding tool with tongs long enough to reach all the way across the pan so I could weld it in the way the Volkswagen factory did. Well, guess what? I don't have access to a tool that expensive. I don't. MIG weld is just gonna be the best way. And for those that are working on their, their cars in their own driveway, you know, even a $100 MIG welder from your favorite Chinese imported tool shop <laughs> can supply you with. Just don't use their welding wire, by the way. Use at least a, a good name brand wire. Um, and you could put a floor pan in using welding, uh, big welding, just the same. Works out fine. So anyway, this is good. The other thing that people were kvetching at me for was, why don't you clamp this down? Well, once again, I don't have clamps with tongs long enough to go all the way over this thing and clamp it down. It would be the only thing I would use them for would be on this floor pan. Some people say, well, drill it and run Clecos through. Great, more holes to fill. I think there's a better way. How about wherever you're going to put a weld, put your foot on it. Now it's tight. Start your welds on the ends, in the middle, in between those, in between those, and then you get so forth and so on. About every inch and a half. You could space them as wide as two inches. I suggest you stay a little closer to that at about one and a half. Even one inch you can go down to. Anything tighter than that, I think you're wasting your time. And do not run a solid bead all the way along the edge of it. I get asked about that a lot also. If you run a solid bead all the way along of this, when the car expands and contracts from heat, uh, that weld will break because welds are extremely hard metal and they tend to get brittle they'll snap sheet metal on the other hand has a tendency to warp it'll stretch it'll do all kinds of neat things but that weld will not give so in putting welds about every inch and a half you have a little bit of place for the metal to expand and contract just that little bit and that makes all the difference in the world stopping your welds from cracking all right, well, we're ready to start welding on this thing. Uh, I got my fan set up because last time the wind was blowing this way, and as I was welding along here, the smoke would blow out of my face. Well, one time the wind did change direction just for a moment, and it got up in my face, and I try to hold my breath whenever I'm welding anyway, so I do some short stints and then get away from it because I can't breathe smoke. I'm highly allergic. But people were telling me, Duck Man, you shouldn't be breathing that smoke. It's bad for you. Yeah, you're right. I'm also not supposed to go to the produce department and stick any of that stuff up my ass but you know that's just the way it goes anyway uh what we've got right here is a floor pan that's ready to be welded in so we're going to run around the edges we're going to get some welds on this thing and we're going to call this side done just before the sun goes down gabriel didn't show up today shame on you gabriel what that means is you have to do the other side tomorrow <laughs> hey duck man what are your welder settings i'm not telling you why I'm not telling you is because unless you have exactly the same welder with exactly the same weld wire and exactly the same environmental conditions with exactly the same power coming out of your wall, I can almost guarantee you that it's not going to be the same. It's probably not even going to get you within the ballpark. 
So I'm not telling anybody that, and that's one of the things people have been asking in the previous video a lot. It, kind of rudely, too. You know, it'd be nice if you tell us your welder settings. Well, not all welders are created equal. Not every environment's the same. Sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> that's the best I can do. It would be nice if, you know, you went over to my Patreon and threw me a bone and asked me nicely. Maybe then I'd help you. But anyway, yeah, welder settings, I'm not going to tell them because I've noticed some really wide variances in what I've gotten and what my friends have gotten. So therefore, no welder settings are being shared. Let's weld away. Well, that's about it for today. Despite this floor pan fitting as well as it did, it's uh, awfully thin. Man, I had an awful lot of burn through. I mean, way too easy it was burning through, especially up here in the front. So I might have to revisit that in daylight and see if I could just touch it up a little bit. But uh, otherwise, along through here, everything turned out really nicely. All the welds are spaced within an inch to an inch and a half apart. They're certainly not evenly spaced by any means, but uh, they're well enough. It's all gonna get covered with some seam sealer and paint anyway. And then you're gonna throw a carpet over it. Nobody's ever gonna see it. But uh, it should be strong, yeah, it's strong. Do not step here on this corner. That will bend the shit out of the floor pan. Ask me how I know. But otherwise, it's, uh, it's good and solid and it's not falling out from where it is. So we're good on that. And then Gabrielle has to come over and do the other side tomorrow. That's right, Gabrielle, yeah. <laughs> the next day. All right, and we're back. Good morning, everybody. Look who's here to join us today. I'm drunk. Leave me alone. <laughs> You're drunk first thing in the morning, huh? <laughs> I, just I just got out of the bar. I got stuck in there. <laughs> Did you? Well, yesterday, as you guys saw me work on that floor pan, I got the one side replaced in just a little bit of afternoon time. I try not to work directly in the sun, so I wait for shade. So I waited for that, and then I started fixing my tools and getting things prepared, which was way too late to do that. So I ran out of time. Anyways... Gabriel over here from Vocho Wagons decided to show up and we're gonna bust his ass into getting the other side sawed out, welded in, cleaned up, you know, the whole works. I already did that side. What yeah, it looks, looks great. Looks great. Looks really great. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna put the uh, saws all in his hand in just a minute and uh, we're gonna go ahead and start running around this thing and cutting up some bits. First thing we're gonna do though is we're gonna remove that seat hump right out of there, the same as we did over on this side. So that way we can lay the new floor pan over it, make sure all those bolt holes along the outer flange all line up with the new floor pan. Kind of important, especially for him, because when he gets home, he wants to just be able to bolt the body directly on without having to dick around with too much. And as we saw on the other side, everything did line up uh, pretty well on the first try. The floor pan was just perfectly cut. That was uh, kind of amazing, actually. I was impressed by that. And you said it was what, a Brazilian floor pan? The, the Brazilian floor pans. Anyway, let's go ahead and get sawing, and uh, well, we'll see what happens with this thing. Hopefully be done in, in not too much time. All right, Gabrielle's all tooled up. 
we cut some slots in some areas with the plasma cutter so that way he can get the sawzall right there into the slot and get a cut open. Yeah, I know we could run the plasma cutter all the way around it, but I discovered the other day with a really good blade in the thing, the sawzall is just faster than anything else. It also gets into some areas like around the seat tracks a whole lot better and with better direction than you can with the plasma cutter. It also cuts straighter because the blade is, well, thin and narrow. <laughs> That's a good blade on there. Um, you should be able to cut it out. First, we're going to start with this pedestal. So pick yourself some holes, get yourself cutting, and uh, let's pull that pedestal out, and then we'll get the old holes lined up with the new floor pan. Do this. Do it up. It works. Has one complete. <laughs> Let's see what you got. Oh, look at that. It is out. Good job. All right, now we're ready to throw that floor pan on there and see what it looks like as far as fitment is concerned. Now that front corner off to your right there, push it in as tight as you can get it. I know it's bent a little bit, but step on it if you have to. Just push it down in the corner. What do you think? It lines up pretty good? Looks pretty bad, actually. Yep. <laughs> okay, I see hole lined up. That one lined up. How do those line up? Okay, this is another good floor pan. They cut this one nicely. We're not going to have to modify it. We should be able to just uh, cut the old one out, push this one right in with no modifications, and weld it right in. This is good. They're not normally this easy. <laughs> that one worked out really good. Okay, go ahead and pull that sucker back out of there then. Stand it back up against the wall, and uh, we are ready to just cut the rest of it out. Now, as we said before, this is every one of these, every one of these, you guys, is a learning experience. And this one is no different. When I did the one on the other side, and I was running the saws all through it, not only did I realize, I kind of knew it, the saws all cuts faster than the plasma cutter does, but I diverted from where I usually cut. Where the two panels come together, there's a little bit of a lip on the underside. You don't want to cut that. But I came off of it about an inch too far to one side, and I didn't care. I just wanted it out. I'm going to strip it all down anyway. Well, when I ran the air chisel down the underside of it, that extra meat that was on there made it a whole lot easier to get the air chisel under and pull the whole thing out as one big piece rather than coming out with a whole bunch of little torn pieces of metal. So what we're going to do here is we're going to run off of this about an inch or so and make that line along here. Same up in the front, same up in here as much as you can. This is where the seat track's at. Run it right along the inside of that seat track, up through here, and then cut right through this and we'll clean off the rest of that with the air chisel. And then right around in here, a little semi-horseshoe shape around that hook, and I think you're gonna be good to go. Can you handle that? You're gonna do it. He's gonna do it. Here it goes, choppy choppy. Let's see. What's the best way for the newest guys that are just watching for the first time? Best way, go back, go forward. Oh, where to cut first? Yeah. I would start cutting right there in that back corner and run it forwards. If you're left-handed or right-handed, you might want to go the opposite direction. But I would always cut the inside lip first and then do the outers last because that way the floor pan kind of stays in and stays level. That might help a little bit when it comes to just keeping things steady to cut. That's, good. Well, let's do it. That's the way I do it anyway. Somebody let's else might it. tell you otherwise. but uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Comment, not, comment number 393. Right. You're doing it wrong. Doing it oh, you're doing it wrong. Oh, God. You're doing it so wrong. <laughs> Where's OSHA when you need him? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Just keep that cut as close as you can to the seat track. Don't cut into the tunnel. What's stopping it? Going. That's it, just keep right on going. It's harder there. Yeah, because you're kind of cutting through a little bit of the seat track, too. That's why. Yeah, just let it go through it, it'll do its job. 
<laughs> once I mounted the GoPro to the saw. <laughs> no, I probably won't do this. Yeah, that, that gave really weird footage. <laughs> was much faster than the plasma cutter could have done. Plasma cutter would have required a couple of passes. I just don't have a steady enough hand to handle it. It'll hit some spots where there's some rust or some paint and it won't want to make an arc and then you have to go back through it again. That Sawzall is just probably a better tool for this in this case and most people usually have a Sawzall. They don't, they don't necessarily have a plasma cutter. All right, well that was good. You just about got it. You got two more cuts to go. That one in the back is a real pain in the ass because there's a lot of metal you got to cut through back there. Okay, let's get rid of this one. Yep, then. pull that one out of there. Good job on there. You destroyed that. <laughs> you already got your wires and stuff out of the way. We didn't discuss yeah. that, but there are some wires that normally run through those holes. We've pulled them out. Ah, oh, now I can't see. Oh shit. <laughs> Let me go around I, the I other know, side. I know, I, 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 no, no, if you were comfortable that way, do it oh, that I mean, way. I, I can probably do it. I'm, I'm not going to tell you to move. If you were comfortable, you need to run the tool the best way. Never mind the camera oh, angle. There we go. That's what zoom is for. Did you go through? Okay, you got that last horseshoe cut down there in the bottom. Yeah. That one's kind of tricky. Let me see it from the bottom. I want to see it from the bottom. Yeah, you'll see there's a square pad underneath there. I know what I'm working on. And there's like a hook. Happen? I don't know. You might not be able to, but. <laughs> it looks like you didn't even cut it free. The welds broke on their own. <laughs> Saw me getting mad. So. That was it. The welds just broke. You didn't. <laughs> What's left there on the end? What is all that? Oh, that's still part of the floor pan. It's separated. Okay. That's uh. That's kind of amazing. Guys, sometimes you just need intimidation and that's it. That is pretty amazing. That's it's just, it, it, the floor pan just disintegrated, so we didn't even have to cut it. We just kind of ripped it out. Well, <laughs> I don't have parking but... All right, let's go ahead and give this thing a closer inspection and see what we got. Yeah, and this is the part that uh, he was trying to cut it free, and it actually just, the welds broke loose. Check that out. It looks like somebody has had the floor pan off of this before because there are actual screws going through this into here. So I would say at some point this has been separated, maybe even repaired or replaced at some point. Do you have any knowledge of that? No, no knowledge. No? I don't see any evidence that looks like, ah, uh, wait a minute. Yes, I do. Look at these. Those are screws. These are not welds. Mm, so we did not notice that before. So this floor pan has been replaced on this side. So that explains what happened there. Somebody actually screwed it in. And yeah, it is possible to screw these things in. You can do that. I wouldn't recommend it, because I think welds are just overall better. But if you don't have a welder, sure, you could uh, you could rivet them in, or you could just run screws in it. But yeah, that was probably a replacement floor pan at some point, which means the floor pans in this were probably worse. Because we were thinking it was really good unrestored condition, and it looks like it's been semi-restored at some point. Well, the other side had no screws, just this one did. All right, well, we're good. We now have a floor pan. Go ahead, lift that up. Show the audience what you got there. Wait, I'm still shaking. You're still shaking from the tool? <laughs> Look at that. All right. Rocking and rolling. That's it. Now push it forwards and let it fall. Wait, like push it like beam McQueen or... Oh, the... Boom. All right, we're about to strip out that metal strip and we've got this wonderful air hammer. Hold that up and show me what it looks like. Pull that trigger. <laughs> We got the end on there nice and sharpened. Now we have to separate those two pieces of metal. There's that lip that comes out of the tunnel and there's the piece of the floor pan that still remains on it. We discovered while looking more closely that those little beads are not welds. Those are screws. And they appear to be stainless steel screws. I tried to unwind some of them, but apparently the holes in which they've been threaded into are all rusted out and stripped, so the screws don't want to come out. But I real quickly ran the air chisel down here in the center to see if it would knock the screws out. And indeed, it broke the screws and split them, so this is not going to be that hard to remove. So I think we're going to be well off. Well, go ahead. Show me what you got there. Let's see what you got. Yeah, not that. <laughs> 
put that down below in between those two pieces of metal. Got to get the rest here up front. Try to get all that caulk out of there. And... What you think? Good? Easy. You have you the right to... tools? <laughs> you want to hit a little bit more? You want to hit right here? Yeah, hit that a little bit more and go along the edge just a little bit more. Clean up just a little bit more of the rust. It looks pretty good over here, actually. Oh, no way. You did better than I thought. Never mind. Yeah, just a little bit more through here. There's some spots where we're going to hit with the welds and then try to get in the corner as much as you can. Okay. Also, on the end there, you got to go up and over the top because the weld is going to run over the top of that. Okay? Let's do it. Let me do that part first. We've got to do on this guy right here now is we got to clean off the paint lip right on here. I'm trying to get you to pay attention actually. <laughs> I'm nervous. nervous. Never been on camera before. First time on camera. What you want to do is you want to run the, the grinder along this and you don't want to cut into it. Just just let it skate the surface and get that paint off of here. You want to run all the way along the edge, all the way along this edge, up through here, down through here, and then up on the back side just to the end. Not to cut myself on this here. Right up on this, up through here, up over the top. Stop. Don't do this edge because that doesn't weld in. This over here is where that pad goes through. It welds onto the hook. We're going to just drill a couple of little holes in here and then we're going to just uh, fill in with a, uh, what do they call it, a button weld. There's a name for it. I don't remember. It escapes me at the second. But that's how we're going to go ahead and handle that. So I'm going to give that to you. I'm going to let you go ahead and clean those up. Let me start grinding it. He's grinding it. <laughs> There's an app for that. When you grind on, the, on one of these wheels, by the way, you don't want to press on the surface so much because it'll cause the wheel to turn and it'll shatter. So if you're very gentle, you can, but in this case, just run it along. Last thing we need to do is straighten out that floor pan. You can actually see the bend in it <laughs> that happened during shipment and being tossed around. So we're gonna have to flatten it out as best we can. You might be able to do it by hand. If not, we'll put it on a piece of wood and hit it with a hammer a couple times. But let's see what you can do right there. Come on, show me your strength. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> it's great seeing somebody else go through all the troubles, not me for a change. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that everybody tells me on YouTube, you know, all the experts are telling me I'm doing it wrong. God damn it, they never did it themselves. If there. they did, they'd be experiencing exactly the same thing that Gabrielle is here. <laughs> Bring the duct tape. <laughs> the duct tape. That's how we'll install it. <laughs> Bring the screws. Yeah, the screws. Why am I yelling? Because I'm still wearing little, this shit. <laughs> this was a little bent, but I just pushed on it, straightened it out. That's good. You're in over here. Yep. In the middle, it'll go in a little bit more. Good, good, it's gonna fit. Everything's gonna fit just fine. This here, a little weight on that. There it is, press it in. Okay, we can get some weld started on it. Now comes the fun part. Hee! There we go. Got you a nice rum and cola. Well, that's right. This is what I call my world famous ginger bombshell. Cheerios. Cheers. Tell me what you think of that one. Let me see. It's like Christmas all over again. Christmas, huh? 
<laughs> you get Christmas out of that. It's got a very citrus flavor. There's uh, ginger in it too. And I'm going to talk about how to make one of these drinks upcoming in a future video. People keep asking me, how do you make the perfect rum and cola? This is actually a special rum and cola, but it's something else that I like to drink. And it's the first time somebody's actually shared one with me here on camera. <laughs> this is good. You like that, this huh? Good. <laughs> and you know the best part about it? It's a light rum anyway. There's not a whole lot of alcohol in it. If you try to like get drunk on it, it's too sweet then because it's really sweet. But the good thing was my didn't have a lot left in the bottle either. So. <laughs> I don't know what, <laughs> what it, you get. I, all I can think of it's Christmas. Like it's Christmas again. Like flavor is good. It reminds me of like the cold yeah, there's, weather. Um, there's a bit of cinnamon in it. I mm -hmm. taste it. There's a little bit of a cinnamon flavor. The cinnamon. Cinnamon and in Spanish for you. Cinnamon and cinnamon. Cinnamon and cinnamon. Cinnamon and cinnamon. cinnamon. <laughs> There is a little bit of a cinnamon, not like, well, maybe a little bit like fireball, the spices, but just a, just a touch like a, of it. It's just a touch, yes, yeah, a, a hint, touch, a hint. Much oh, more citrusy though. So good. Take three, bottle number two. Nice. <laughs> now we're gonna weld crooked. Not that I ever weld straight. Anyway, maybe I weld straight now. <laughs> right. I always weld better when I'm drunk. There are some things I do better when I'm drunk. Let me hell, I beat that hole. I build that whole beetle drunk. I <laughs> chopped the roof while I was drunk. <laughs> Second part, there's gonna be subtitles. I'm gonna be talking in Spanish from now on due to this. So I'm gonna have to dub over it, right? <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna be getting good. Ah, this is good shit. This is good shit. It's really good shit. Hmm. Let's wait. You know what? This should be part of putting some new floors. You know, the like ginger this. bombshell. Yes, yes. It's like. A must before you put them, or while you're putting them together, Whatever. and before and after, and before and yes, in between. This is, I'm glad you like it though. I yeah. knew you would. This is like a yes. party favorite. Whenever I have people over, yes. I make these for them. Like you want a ginger bombshell? What's that? Well, actually, I invented it. I named it after a girl I used to date because she was a ginger bombshell. She's redheaded, bodybuilder. She was hot. She was a ginger bombshell, and that's what this drink is. There's a um, ginger in it. It's uh, got a special rum in it that's like a bomb, <laughs> based on its name. We'll talk about it later. Don't want to talk about it in this video. But um, it's just absolutely delicious. It's just delicious. I can't I stop drinking, drinking it. it fast. I can't stop drinking, drinking it. it fast. It's, it's really good. good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> this is the girl I used to date. I'm going to borrow this for a few minutes and then... <laughs> I'd show you guys, but I don't have her permission. But... Uh, yeah, she's a looker, isn't she? Yeah. And this is her now. I dated her 11 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I can't stop drinking it. This shit is good. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to get back on task in just a minute after we're properly versnickered. Ah, hi. Yeah, I figure we're going to do a quick Super Beetle lesson here for me since I've never had a Super Beetle apart before. I figure for those of you that are watching, this might actually be a good source of knowledge uh, for those of you that are removing a body off of a super beetle. Elias Gabriel over here, what in the hell are these two holes here and what exactly screws into them? And he said, these are the two bolts that are go underneath the gas tank. Uh -huh. So actually you need to remove the gas tank. Of course you have these two, but these are coming from the inside. So okay, so those inside. are body mounts also. Body mounts also. So and there's two more here for body mounts also. Correct. So this two is different from the regular beetle. Standard beetles don't have those. That's don't right. Those. We they do have, have these these. Though. Yeah, these you have these though. Yeah, you have these three standard, yeah. and all the edge. All the rest. Yeah, is all the, the rest in the back is the same. But these two are are gonna be there. These two right here, which uh -huh. you have to remove the gas tank. Uh -huh. There's gonna be some plastic covers right there underneath. You remove the plastic covers, and that's it. Plastic covers, and then that comes out of there. Yep. And then you had a little problem up here removing the uh, the front end. Correct. Because there was two more bolts. Two more bolts that you need to take off, and it's right here. And the oval it's holes right on the other on end of the, the hammerhead shark over here. Exactly. I thought it was the sway bar that was hanging you up, but it turned out that was all attached to the hammerhead, huh? Mm -hmm. Interesting. And of course, the tie rods need to come up. Tie rods. Why did we remove the tie rods? Because of course you have independent uh, suspension on the Super Beetle, so... Well, we do on a oh, standard Beetle. The, well, yeah, but in this case, this, the, the... What do you call the box? The stupid box? McPherson struts? Yes! This is what makes it a little bit different from that of a standard Beetle. Exactly. And your steering box, you were steering saying? box, it's mm -hmm. actually connected to the shell, to the body of the Super Beetle. Okay. So in order for them to be separated and 
Lift Actually, does bottom. it have a steering box or does it have a ring and pinion? Uh, a rack and pinion, I should say. I really don't know the difference between those two. So. Well, I'm looking at how far apart these tie rod ends are. It's probably not a box. It's a long thing, right? With a little arm sticking out of it or something? Yes, it was like, well, it was like a box and it's, it has a little arm sticking out. So if it has a different name, okay. the steering box. Then I, think it, I think it's a, a rack and pinion and I think it turns in the opposite direction that you would expect it to. In other words, if you turn your steering wheel to the right, the rack and pinion will move to the left. And the reason for that is because the spindles attach on the opposite side of the wheel or opposite side of the axle from a standard beetle because normally the tie rods will come back here. Okay. So what happens is the rack and pinion, I think it's a rack and pinion on here, has to automatic. actually turn in the opposite direction, which is the reason why you can't adapt one of those to a standard beetle. Hmm. Unless you put your spindles on backwards and that's gonna yeah, that's gonna don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. It's going to mess up your caster. Well, your caster is going to be messed up. Spindles are designed in a certain way so that way the wheels trail behind the uh, the pivot points. And that, that's what caster is. That's what keeps your wheels going straight. If you ever seen the wheels in a shopping cart doing this kind of crap, or that's what keeps them going in a straight line when, they're, when they actually work as they're supposed to. is caster because they're slightly offset. And that's what's going on here with that. So, you, yeah, don't mount your spindles on in reverse and use a rack and pinion from a Super Beetle. That's just not a good idea. <laughs> But that was a great lesson right here. I mean, this is stuff I didn't know, the body mounts in, in, in particular. I have never had a body off of a Super Beetle. So, for those of you that are watching, yep, that stuff is not the same as a standard Beetle. All these bolts, however, that run around the perimeter are, including the bolts on top of the shock towers are also standard. And there's no rear engine hangers or anything on a Type 1 like there would be on a late model Type 3 or late model uh, bay window bus. So there's none of that kind of stuff. Beetles are, well, even the Super Beetle is still kind of simple. Things are a little different, but they're really still not that hard. It's good. This is really good. Good. Learning. Learning. And we're going to take it out in the field next to your house and do some donuts with it when we get it together, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chocolate donuts right now sounds good. Chocolate donuts with that drink? You think so? Mmm. <laughs> Let's see. Where am I? Oh, I'm almost done. There you go. Good for you. And it didn't knock your socks off either. You notice you might have a little bit of a buzz, but that's about it. It's, it's just a very, very light room. Perfect. All right, we started to tack it in in about a dozen different spots. I like to do one of two things. Some people tell me I'm doing it wrong, but sometimes I like to put a tack in the middle to make sure everything's good and solid to make sure it's in place. But in this case, because the ends can sometimes get a little bit wonky, I like to tack on the end here and the end here and then push the middle in and tack it in the middle. Now if you're using, a, like putting nails in a 2x4, you know how you put them together and sometimes you get ones a little bit warped, you can kind of bend it into place and then nail it in. In this case it's something very similar to that, but metal doesn't have the same kind of give that wood does. So what I like to do is put a lot of tacks with a lot of distance in between them, and then once we've got this thing settled to the way it is, you can then weld in between those tacks and then in between those until finally your gaps are down to about an inch, inch and a half. Again, there's no reason to go overboard on this and definitely do not weld in a straight bead all the way across because the expansion contraction will cause it to crack and it will fail down the road. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and continue on this. All right, we got a couple of tacks started up over here. I got the floor pan pretty much attached uh, to where it needs to be. Everything's in the right spots. Unfortunately, I didn't start recording in time. I got the welder dialed in. It seems like it's uh, in a pretty good, pretty good spot. Not making too much wire. It's not too hot. But I've uh, told Gabriel here how to apply the heat and how the tunnel is thicker metal. So you need to get the weld started on the tunnel and then kind of bring it down a little bit into the floor pan. If you don't do that, of course, and you put the metal, or the heat rather, into both at the same time, you're just gonna burn a hole through the floor pan or it's not gonna stick adequately to the tunnel. Or worse yet, you burn a hole through both of them if you just wait entirely too long, but uh, don't do that. What are you doing? <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> Look like you're about to weld it. I, no, I didn't see the, uh, I was like, where is it? I was like, a little dick just... sticking out of there? All right. Let me put on my mask. That's right, we're both wearing masks. I have a luchador mask. Luchador. I said it like an Italian, though. <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia. Let's see, let me... All right, go ahead when you're ready. Let me fuck it up. Oops, shit, camera fell down. 
<laughs> I was looking at you. <laughs> Did I fuck it up? I don't know. I can't tell from this distance. It's not centered. <laughs> have a runner. <laughs> you did okay, but you need to get a little more heat into the tunnel. Okay. Because I don't know if you adequately penetrated into that metal or not. So go right above that well uh -huh. and just kind of heat it up a little bit and bring it down just a bit. I think you're otherwise in good shape. Think you got it? I'm looking. I would have put a little more time into it, but uh, get this camera adjusted. I'm here. afraid of making a hole. Uh, I think you got it. Um, look a little more closely here. No, you got it. You got it. Yeah, you burned it a little bit. <laughs> now I've waited too I'll long. Touch it up for you. No, you put the heat in the wrong spot. Okay. He has to go in more this way okay, and less it. this way. So I don't want to go in like this. And try to get over there. Do one more. Do one more. Oh, he's gonna do three welds today. He's a pro now. He's a pro. That's it. Going professional. Going for that third one. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Nope. More into the tunnel. Fucked it up. I think I used made a Yeah, you, you burned it up a little bit, but go into the tunnel a little more. Make a puddle and let it bleed down into the floor pan. You'll be alright. Nope. Ah, uh, more. Just needs more. I think you're a little far away too. Try to get in a little closer. Yeah, when you're up close, the welding just sounds better. It has more of a bacon sizzle. When you're further back, it was stopping and going, so it was kind of making a mess. But yeah, that, that's kind of ugly, but we can fix that. <laughs> yep. All right, I guess I'll finish it up for you. <laughs> but I had to let you do a couple of them. <laughs> I ain't no welder. That's it. Well, neither am I, really, but I get the job done. <laughs> there you go. It's ugly, but it's fixed. No more hope. All right, we'll go over here now. Feel better about doing this now that you're seeing it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to boost your confidence. I think I need to like practice with like other pieces of metal at home. Or yeah, yeah, practice on somebody else's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like me, I see all that fire, and me, I would have already panicked. Yeah. Like, ah, like I'm nah. fucking it up. And I would have stopped them. You see that tar board always starts to burn. But let, that's it. That would have been the first tag that I do. And I see that happen. I'm like, nope, <laughs> nope, that's it. I'm kind of funny. I'm paying $600 somebody for fucking business. <laughs> Actually, I'm much happier with the way this is turning on this side. The other side I was doing was starting to get dark and I couldn't see a damn thing. But, well, if I didn't touch it up, it would have looked really bad. <laughs> wow, Bill. You coming back? Yeah. He sure is. He's going to be asking for something. <laughs> uh oh, here comes Wild Bill. Oh man. What you doing? Well, hey, you're on the wrong side of the railroad tracks. Oh yeah, that's it. You gotta have one of them Corona zombie masks. Who's this dude? I don't know. 
Yeah. Some guy I just found. I don't know, I crossed the border and I landed here. I don't know what That's it. And you're on the wrong side of the railroad tracks yeah, yourself there, mister. Yeah, yeah. We were trying to figure out this camber problems, you know. Yeah, for off-roading. Well, we were going to build a little 2 by 4 yeah, um, yeah, frame or something to go on change. it, but it because it's only sitting here temporarily, we didn't bother. Yeah, that little jig, there's a little jig you can put up there. And... Yeah, I mean, when he gets it back home, what's the first thing he's going to do is going to clean up the paint on it, and then he's going to put the body right back on, so no Put's big deal. Damn starter hanging there, dude. Don't, why don't you... Oh, they're supposed to be like that. Yeah, that's the way they're supposed to be. This yeah. is the new way to do them. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, the starter hangs just like that. No yeah. worries. It's, it's, new. it's called a hung starter. Yeah, this hasn't been hit in the front, man. This Doesn't is... appear to be, no. no. Looks good. Overall, it was actually a pretty rust-free car. Yeah. Somebody replaced the uh, right-hand side floor pan at some point. We noticed that today because it was screwed in. Now, obviously, they're not supposed to be that way, but the driver's side was still in decent shape, and it was the original welds. Mm. So it wasn't, uh, wasn't too bad, but he wanted to replace the whole thing. It made more sense just make them brand new. Because that paint that's on there is, is that's just a preservative. Yeah, correct. Yeah, no, I'm trying to like do some good cover on this. I had talked to Earl about that. Yeah. yeah. And Earl said, as long as it's not flaking off and it's good solid paint, if it sticks, paint over it. Just rough it up and paint. Rough it up and paint over it. If it's starting to peel and there are some spots where it's coming off kind of easy, then go ahead and strip off as much of it as you can and Judging go with it. about what the rest of the frame looks like, I think that's probably about your best bet to do. Yeah. That, you can wire brush that off. Yep. That's what I'm Put some wire on it. Yep. A little bit of cat piss goes a long way. You do. Just finished up our welds, things are looking good. We have to put my world famous cat piss up on here. For those of you that are Spanish speaking, orina de gato, they say it with an accent. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Pretty good. Yeah, no <laughs> accent at all. Really? No. Yeah. <laughs> I think I rolled my R a little too hard. I sounded more like a Puerto Rican. Because they do that, right? The R. They... The, no, they don't sound the, uh, the they put an L instead of an R. Really? Yeah, so instead of Puerto Rico, it's Puerto Rico. I have never heard that. Really? Yeah, coming from New Jersey, you know, I knew a lot of people from uh, Puerto Rico. And I used to remember them always on every R. No, every no, single don't. R. Puerto Ricans don't roll their R's, they put an L. An L? Yeah. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Sounds like you have a lisp. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm learning. I just made a mess. Spanish would actually be my third language. I learned German before I even got as far as Spanish. <laughs> and that stuff I mostly forgot. I have to be around somebody who speaks a lot of German for me to remember any of it. <laughs> I see all the metal all turned color. Mm -hmm. It all turned nice and gray, which is a sign that it's working. I was gonna say it was like immediately right there to the other. Yeah, it works pretty good. Um, don't try to paint on this today. You probably no, won't, no, I won't. This stuff has to dry for about 24 hours. Yeah, no, I still have to. This is going to go in the garage, right? Yeah, I'm, get, I'm going back to work tomorrow. As soon as I get home, it's just getting it off the 
the trailer so I can return the trailer tomorrow. All right, well, we're wrapping up this video today. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Right here is Gabriel from Vocho Wagons. He's having a look at the floor pan, and what do you think today from what you see? Awesome. If I can do it, anybody else can do it. Yeah, he did all this work himself. All of it. If I can do it, just all, all of it. <laughs> I'm glad he showed up on the second day to do his half anyway, because, I mean, it was a lot of work. Yes. A lot of work. Truthfully, it's, it's not that much. I mean, you could do this if you have everything set up. Floor pan already with the body off. I'd say total start to finish time is like four hours maybe. I mean, we really didn't run into any weird problems. Everything was easy. In fact, the fact that we found the one side was held in with screws made it even easier to come apart. So whatever that's worth, that's it. Well, as always, you guys, like, comment, subscribe, plug that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DougShit.net for all my different social media links. Look down below in the video description and find a link to Vocho Wagons. Vocho Wagons. And make sure you subscribe to Gabriel just the same. He's going to be finishing his car, and you'll also see some updates on White Boy. That's right, the white beetle that I used to have is currently in his possession, and he's driving the shit out of him. Oh, yeah. uh, he's really enjoying it. I built that car for me, so he knew he got something good when he got it. And uh, it's been good to him for the most part. I mean, you you haven't yep. had too many troubles with it, have you? Nothing. No, nothing, nothing. at all? No major problems. Electrical, I fixed. I uh -huh. added stuff. There yeah, was electrical stuff. issues. I added stuff. Yeah, but stuff. A little oh, bit of tune ups here and there, just the usual yeah, stuff. Yeah, huh? oil change, because I don't know when was the last time one was done. I don't uh, remember either. Yeah, <laughs> it's so we did an oil while. change and uh, the new headlights. The headlights. You can see them now on the videos. You check them out, LED headlights, guys. They are, I mean, just knockout gorgeous. And I was going to make something like this for my car, but he actually found a product that was already on the market that turned his headlights into what I wanted to do. Which oh my god! Now I can't buy them because he's doing them. <laughs> I can't copy somebody else. I gotta have my own. <laughs> So anyways, I think that's it for today. Anything else you'd like to interject or add before we go? No, guys, hey, uh, thank you to Senor Pato. Uh, like he said already, go to Bocho Wagons if you guys want to learn or see a few more videos in Spanish, see uh -huh. the updates on the stupid beetle. I mean, just go over there, see you there, and thank you to Senor Pato again. You're welcome, man. I really appreciate you guys coming by to watch us, and uh, we'll see you all next time.